Here are the McDonald's starting lineups tonight. Latrell Sprewell, Kevin Garnett, Irvin Johnson, Trenton Hassel, along with Sam Cassell. Sacramento Kings, Peja Stiakovich, Chris Weber, Vladi Divots, Doug Christie, and Mike Bibby. There's a look at Flip Saunders, the coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves, and Peja Stiakovich. With Vladi Divots, this is Game 3, Best of 7 Western Conference Semifinal. We'll tell our audience we're going to save our best stuff for later on, but we'll just get you underway right now. And our officials tonight, Dick Pavetta, Jimmy Clark, and Tony Brothers. Six till. Six till what? Top of the hour. There we go. Greenwich Mean Time. Kevin Garnett will jump for the Timberwolves against 35-year-old Bloody Devons. And we are underway. Mike Bibby, Doug Christie, Stiakovic, and Devon's on top against Irvin Johnson. Whoa. Walked by Kevin Garnett. <laughs> Here comes Latrell Sprewell, three on two, and Spree on the fly. Rebound by Stiakovic. Doug Christie, defense by Sam Cassell. A little help by Irvin Johnson. And that goes in. Look to take Cassell right into the post. Take advantage of that size matchup because they're going to put Sprewell on Bibby. Trying to make Cassell play defense in the low post. Here comes Cassell. Off to Kevin Garnett. Rebound by Stiakovic. Doug Christie. Good pass to Stiakovic. Stepped out of bounds. Yep, he sure did. That's a King's first turnover since midway through the third quarter of game two. Pat McGrath with that nice nugget. Over here, our statistician. With no foreign roots. Cassell, Sprewell, Trenton Hassel. Urban Johnson. Sam Cassell. And Kevin Garnett. So he's had a very good shooting series out of bounds and off of Irvin Johnson. I thought Garnett should have off the Kings. I thought Garnett should have taken that shot. Kevin wide open at the foul line. Too unselfish there, getting the ball to Hassel. 10-39 in the first quarter. Hassel off the baseline. Gives to Sprewell. Started by Weber on the defensive switch. Cassell. Hassel, who they're now watching, and Sprewell with a good fake by Christie. And he nails it, and the game is even a two apiece. Minnesota, one of the better passing teams in the NBA, perennially one of the tops in assists and fewest in turnovers. Weber. Bibby. Device. Irvin Johnson leaning on him. Shot clock at three for Vladi. That was so easy, wasn't it? Vladi, the little up and under shot that ball from his waist. <laughs> here comes Sprewell. Oh, Rebound Sprewell. by Christie. Looking to be very aggressive here early. That's three quick shots, two in transition. There's Doug Christie off to Vladi Divots. And Christie with Chris Weber. And the Kings on top by four. Here's Sam Cassell. Into Irvin Johnson. Quickly draws the double as Hassel is free with the jam. Why double team Irvin Johnson? They double team Irvin Johnson. Just dive right to the rim and a score. Got to make him shoot the ball. Three minutes gone in this first quarter. Stojakovic and Chris Weber over Garnett. And Johnson had it taken away by Divas and Bibby. Cassell for Divas. That might give you the nice thing there. He thought he felt somebody on his shoulder. He felt the world is sort of peeked over his shoulder. He saw there was nobody there. Took the one dribble and knocked in the shot. Just awareness. And here is 
Sal, picked up by Pitty. Garnett, Hassel. Well, they're really not guarding Hassel out there, Kevin. They're just Christie really helping in every way. Kevin Johnson from outside and the gentle touch. Servant Johnson tells me, maybe you better double team me down there. I'll wear you out if you let me shoot that ball you all night. You got that. He got that, my brother. Here's Bibby. Chris Weber. Two oh. traffic. Wow, count it for two. No, that won't count. He fumbled the ball, went in the air. And the Kings will inbound. Lost control of the ball. You're going to see it pops up right there. And then he caught the ball. Johnson picked up the foul to go inside, looking for Peja Stiakovic in a turnover. Off your flip, Saunders, right now, Kevin. You have to be pretty happy. Your team has gotten off to a decent start here. You expected a real emotional surge from Sacramento, and that has not happened right now. So Minnesota played a very good four minutes here to start this game. Hey, Jerry Tarkanian's in the audience over there. Here's Cassell, Sprewell, and Trent Hassel. New defense, lost the ball, picked up by Stiakovic, now over to Doug Christie. It's the first Minnesota turnover. Christie, oh, nice stutter step by Christie. And a turnover with a foul called on Doug Christie. He's got one. Rick Adelman. Chance to tie for the T-Wolves. Cassell, who falls down, has Bibby right there on him. And Sammy Cassell, rebound by Jeff Christie. Asia Stiakovic, around a Weber screen. Rebound by Garnett. Spree, right into Christie, who took it like a man. Here comes Bibby. Over Cassell. Mike Bibby loves to see me, I'm telling you. Every time I come yeah, to the game, the guy does right. not miss. He loves you, doesn't he? Flip Saunders sees two quick jumpers. I'm going to call a timeout here quickly. I'm going to try to control the surge of this crowd. Does not want this crowd to get excited. Now, Mike Bibby, you're going to see him in the open court. Not out of control. Takes his time. Sees he's got Sam Cassell on him, sort of backs him down and makes a little open jumper. It's two in a row for Mike Bibby. And that little shuffle, he means business tonight as they lead by four. Mini me. <laughs> Kings on top by four. This equals their biggest lead. They're on top 10 to six. Our McDonald's starting lineup, Sprewell, Garnett, Urban Johnson, Trenton Hassel, and Sam Cassell. For the Kings, Peja Stiakovic, Chris Weber, Vlade Divac, Doug Christie, and Mike Bibby. The Kings have come out hitting three of their first, make it five of their first eight. The Timberwolves with it, 37% to start the game. And here comes Kevin Garnett, who has yet to score. The shot clock is at 10, and Bibby is on Hassel with Weber knocking it away from Garnett with the shot clock at four. And the big ticket fanning badly, and Garnett now 0 of 2, Doug. Well, Sacramento just set off to a good start, Kevin. Five of their first eight shots they've hit there. And a nice rhythm. You see Mike Bibby throw one in. It's not going to count. But Flip Saunders, after a quick couple shots by Mike Bibby, took a timeout. What he's trying to do is control this crowd early. You're going to have a big emotional surge. They play a little over five minutes, Kevin. Now normally guys settle in and it gets down to execution. But uh, Sacramento trying to get the taste out of their mouth that terrible finish of game two. After getting outscored 16 to 1 at the end of game two is Peja Stiakovic has it rejected by Garnett who had six block shots in game two. He has two block shots tonight and here comes Garnett scoreless so far that early in the game was going to tell a lot about the resiliency of the Kings and the belief in the Minnesota Timberwolves with Irvin Johnson getting a hook. Well Irvin Johnson has three of their four field goals. He's gotten off to a nice start here, but uh, Minnesota's come in here and beaten Sacramento twice in this building. They feel very confident and uh, look like they were going to be down 0-2. It's 1-1. It's a series now. Sacramento's in for a fight. Our officials tonight, Dick Pavetta, Jim Clark, and Tony Brothers. And here comes Chris Weber with the shot clock down to three and Stiakovic for three. The number two score in the regular season. Good offensive rebound by Doug Christie. Took it away from Cassell. 
And out of the hands of Body Divots in a fourth Kings turnover. That's one of the things we have to watch. One of the things Minnesota's been turning the ball over in this series. Sacramento only averaging eight turnovers a game. They already have four. But sometimes you get home and you try to make that pass a little bit too, you know, too cute through traffic. You gotta make the simple play right now as you're trying to get back in the swing of things. Evan Johnson leads the Timberwolves with four points and four points for Mike Biddy. Those are the game highest scores so far. Again, Minnesota has gone four of ten. The Kings five of eleven. And here comes Sprewell with the fake and a pass to Trenton Hassel. To try to tap it back up with a Kings foul inside, and Vladi Divac picks up the foul. It's number one on him. Now the big adjustment in, in game two was uh, Latrell Sprewell played Mike Bibby. They put a bigger man on him, and it bothered Mike Bibby. He was only four of 17 after a big 33-point game. So what you're getting is a little cross matching now, meaning you know, these guys are going to try to guard different people, and we're going to have to watch that in transition here tonight. And Sam Cassell, who is just absolutely brilliant at the game. With the game on the line on Saturday night, Minneapolis winning it for the Timberwolves. Well, I think what people are starting to realize, you know, you have Chris Weber on this team and Pages Stoyakovich, but if you're going to beat Sacramento, you better control this guy. He was brilliant in game one. You saw in the first round of the playoffs, he was great against Dallas. They slowed him down the other night and were able to get a win. So you can see they've geared their defense to try to slow down Mike Bibby. Bibby just assessed his first foul and a nice spinning shot by Kevin Garnett coming off a 26 point performance. Saturday. Biggest lead for the Kings four. Minnesota has not led in the game. We have our first tie now at 10. You see Casella is guarding Christie, so he doesn't have to guard Bibby. So see if he goes inside against him. And it's Weber. With a rebound by Kevin Garnett, who snares his third of the game. The other way comes Sprewell. We had five points in game one and 15 points in game two. Is shot for a high percentage every time and away from the ball. Garnett trying to work through traffic and Doug Christie was trying to follow him and he picks up his second person. Well, you used to be able to bump cutters like that and they tried to clean that lane area up so you can get some cutting and passing through the lane. And I like the, the fact that they're going to let, let you cut through the basket now. Uh, Kevin, it used to be that was a big part of the game and the bodies were knocking guys around and they've cleaned that area up. It's a much cleaner game now in the lane. Anthony Peeler checks in with Christie now and some foul problems. Christie is also playing with a bad left foot. He's got plantar fasciitis and not practicing but playing. And Cassell with a castle jumper, which is retrieved inside by Mike Bibby. And here comes Bibby for the series. He is 14 of 38 coming into tonight. And already has started 2 of 2 this evening. And Bibby over Hassel. With the rebound retained by Garnett, and here comes Sam Cassell. 40 points in game one, and 19 points in game two. And this is when he's dangerous. In the open court coming down, he likes to work off screens and just pull up and shoot the jumper. He got the switch, and that's exactly what he did to Weber. So when you're guarding Cassell, you cannot run down the floor as a big man, Kevin. You've got to turn and see the ball and try to build a wall against him so he can't get those kind of opportunities. Doug, in this series, Sam Cassell from three-point territory has gone 9 of 14. He's been terrific as he spearheads a Minnesota 7-0 run. Well, Sacramento went up 10-6. to They hit five of the first eight shots. They now have four turnovers. Cassell sees the switch. He pulls it back. Chris Weber does not get to him. He knocks it down. A 7-0 run. They now lead by three. It really, I thought, ended his career. He had to retire uh, because he just could not recover from that. Those are injuries. They, they're debilitating, and uh, sometimes they're very small tears, but they, the way you have to cut in this game, they can be very, very painful. Sacramento Kings have missed their last five shots after starting five of eight. Now six consecutive misses, and here comes Minnesota. Your concern for the Timberwolves when they weather the storm. Cassell launching another three. Rebound chased by Garnett into Cassell and around the Hawkins to Hassel, who comes in with the jam, and the Timberwolves have their biggest lead tonight. You know, this, this crowd is a little subdued from the last time you were in there. I think they still are a little bit shook from what happened in game two. The, the Kings need to give them something to cheer about here early. Minnesota very confident playing here. They've won both games. Peeler, who's taking the place of Christie, who's got a couple fouls. There's a foul by Urban Johnson of Minnesota. Well, Minnesota averages over 23 assists a game under 13 turnovers. They're one of the best passing teams. Garnett with a great pass. Cassell with a no-looker to Hassel. And Trenton Hassel seems to be in the right spot at the right time. 
on both ends of the floor in this series. The defense has been good against that man, Peja Stojakovic, as he steps to the line. And how many free throws in a row is that now for him, 65 Kevin? 65 consecutive free throws. Last miss, March 23rd on that defensive free second. He got up there. Now they get possession. And it's 24 straight in the playoffs, I yep, think. So. Yep, exactly. Here's Bibby. Off the rim. Again, Mike Bibby, he's the man. You've got to stop him. When he gets in the lane, he breaks your defense down. And then he gets... Chris Weber, easy baskets, Brad Miller, rest of his teammates. He's got to stop his penetration. That free throw by Stiakovic was the first of the game, and here comes Sprewell. And Irvin Johnson tapping it back in, and Irvin Johnson is leading the Timberwolves with six points, very reminiscent of game one when he had the early scoring lead. Makes a steal right there. Here comes the big ticket at the other end. You don't want to give Kevin Garnett those kind of field goals. You want to make him work. Remember, game one, he was 6 of 21. They did a wonderful job against him. He bounced back with 28 points. And game two got to the line 14 times. Anthony Peeler is having a horrible series. He is 2 of 12 shooting in the series. Sprewell stripped to the ball by Peeler. And that's where Anthony is making his mark, the ex-Timberwolf. And now five turnovers for the Kings and two for the Timberwolves. It's the finish. Fouled as he nails. A three-point off the rim. Hassel picks it up, and Stiakovic, with Hassel picking up his second, will go to the free throw line again for the Sacramento Kings. Well, this kind of dribble penetration in the lane, you see Irvin Johnson comes over. Garnett tries to block the shot. No one to pick up Chris Webber, but Sacramento a little sloppy to start this game, Kevin. They have five turnovers. It's led to six points. And you can see that uh, the, the Kings uh, right now you know, a little bit shaky with their ball handling stuff. I, I think they still have some after effects of that game, too. Uh, they, they feel very strongly they should be up 2-0 in this series right now. But uh, Minnesota 1-1 and feels very confident in this building. You see 66 straight. And now he has gone 14-14 14 of 14 in the playoffs. I got and it. a miss. I'll just let you talk about no, it. No, I'm just saying it was a miss. That's all it was. Foul problems, two on Christie, and he's on the bench. And for the Timberwolves, two on Hassel. And Hoiberg takes his place. And Hoiberg is in. He's had a wonderful series so far. And nails a three-point shot. He was great in game one, better in game two, and has heard from early in game three. Well, he had that eight-point spurt in game two that gave them a ten-point halftime lead. Playing very tough. He's in now to play Stojakovic as Hassel rests. And the Kings were shooting 6 of 16 here for two points. And he gets a rare field goal in this series and brings the Kings to within six. They trap Cassell. And here's Garnett with Weber there and inside to Ola Wakandi. And Garnett gives it back to Sam. A Garnett screen, a mismatch on Weber, and wide open Garnett. It's the Oculus now closing in, and a three-on Sprewell. And Brad Miller in the game with the rebound. And the baseball pass at the other end comes from Anthony Peeler. Well, now, what's interesting about that is Anthony Peeler was a one-time draft choice of the baseball Texas Rangers. Well, I could see that. That was a great pass. And Stoyakovich needed that. He's been struggling. You get that man a layup, maybe he'll take off now with a jump shot. No fouls to give either way. Here comes Olua Candy with a spinner over Miller. Rebound by Weber. And plus two, the Kings are in rebounding tonight. Well, Cliff Saunders giving Michael Olua Candy every chance in the world to get himself going. He has really struggled in the playoffs. It's Peeler to Stoyakovich, who is one of four. And Peeler for three. Rebound by Kevin Garnett. And here comes Minnesota. They are shooting 43%. Again, no fouls to give either way. The last shot of the quarter here. You know, Cassell wants to try to run a screen roll with Garnett, probably. They're going to have to trap him. you got to make Cassell pass the ball here at the end of the quarter. Can't let him shoot it. How's the double? Here's KG thinking about three. This is right here. And Garnett in this series throwing up his very first three-point shot. He is now 0-4. Those are the numbers on Kevin Garnett, the NBA's MVP, with six rebounds and four points for the Timberwolves. Well, Minnesota has to be very happy. In game one of this series, 34 points to Sacramento in the first quarter. Game two, 12 tonight, only 18, a 16-8 run to close the period. Minnesota, they're dictating the way they want to play. They've got a good rhythm. Cassell and Sprewell are only two of nine. They still lead by four. 
And they have to be very happy right now with the pace of play. Only two turnovers. Uh, they, they're doing a nice job. So we begin the second quarter, and Derek Martin has come in for the first time for Minnesota with Sprewell, Garnett, Paul of Candy remains. Hoiberg is in there for Hassel, who's got two fouls. And this is what turns Sprewell for three. Rebound Stojakovic with Vivi Miller. Feeler with the ball because Christie's got two fouls, and Debots continuing to man the center and seeing more minutes in this series than he did against the Dallas Mavericks. A turnover right there, number six for the Sacramento Kings. And Garnett surrounded by white jerseys, had it knocked away. Did Miller get a hand on that? I think he did. did. Yeah. Yep. Stiakovic for three. And a foul called inside on Olawa Candy of the Minnesota Timberwolves, who is leaning over the bat. Brad Miller does a nice job getting back into the play. Kevin Garnett tries to go up and under. Starts a fast break for the Kings. Stojakovic had a very good look at the three, just could not knock it down. The series is tied at one apiece. This is game three, best of seven Western Conference semifinal. And that's knocked away by Kevin Garnett, who already has a couple blocks. That's his third tonight. He's got nine and a little over one game. The six coming in game two, which is a playoff record for the Minnesota Timberwolves. So Kevin Garnett does not have to score to be a big factor for his team. In fact, he didn't hit from the field in that fourth quarter oh. against the Kings, and a miss by Sprewell and a foul inside, I think, on Anthony Peeler of the Sacramento Kings. Peeler spent five and a half seasons with Minnesota. They sent him to Milwaukee. He was cut there and signed as a free agent this summer by Sacramento. Well, with, with Bobby Jackson being out, I mean, they need some good play from Anthony Peeler. I know he's really wanting to play well against his former team. He played five and a half years for the Minnesota Timberwolves, but Christie now with a sore foot and foul trouble. They need some help from him tonight. These are the first free throws by the Timberwolves tonight. The playoffs continue tomorrow night on TNT as the Nets host the Pistons. It's a game four. The Lakers battle the Spurs. Coverage beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Friday, a pair of game five starting at 7. New Jersey, Detroit, Sacramento, Minnesota. One of the things to watch for Minnesota, getting to the free throw line when they make more free throws than their opponents in the regular season. They were 35-2 and two when they score 20 or more from the free throw line, Kevin. I think they're, what, 5-1 and one in the playoffs yes. or something. So that is critical for them to get to that foul line. The problem is they don't get there very much. Here's a three by Stiakovic. Got to lock into him now. See what's happened is Freewell is stepping over to play him with Hassel out of the game. Got to stay locked into Stojakovic. Here's Derek Martin. And Latrell Sprewell. Timberwolves have missed their last six consecutive shots. Miller is on Kevin Garnett, who's got four points. And Olawa Candy can't grab it. Here comes Anthony Peeler, who, while not scoring all that well, is doing the other thing some defense and some rebounding. Vladdy Devox. Foul on Olawa Candy. Count it for two. Well, Vladi has come to life from the Dallas series where he couldn't get in the game, Kevin. They played the small lineup. He and Brad Miller really struggling. So Miller had the two games to finish that series. But vladdy has got fresh legs. He's wheeling and dealing, and they need him to play well. This is a big Sacramento, excuse me, a big Minnesota team, and they need the front line. He and Brad Miller really have been the two guys who shot the ball well and played well here in this series. Going into tonight's game, they were 16 of 27. As a, com a combination, they were averaging over 21 points, over 17 rebounds, and almost eight assists. So back to playing the way they did in the regular season when they played so well. Doug, I know as you were coming into this game tonight, your, your main concern for Sacramento, what kind of insecurity would they carry over from the huge collapse at the end of game two into tonight for Minnesota? You were thinking, all right, what kind of team are they believing they are? A team that, even though they won by a couple points, really control this series. Well, they, they, they know. Minnesota that they got up off the map. They were very fortunate to be able to win that game. Otherwise, they're looking at an 0-2 hole after losing two at home. And from Sacramento, they have to feel good and say, look, we've got the home court now. We're 37, 34 and 7 here in the regular season. We can't lose that advantage. And saved by Devons, who goes diving in the crowd, but the ball remains in Minnesota's hands and a second on the shot clock for three. Montrell Sprewell knocks in the triple and the Timberwolves by three, and that breaks a drought of over four minutes from the field for Minnesota. And Sprewell only two of nine from the floor. He's getting a lot of good shots. That one just a quick shot to beat the clock. 
And the Kings now with the ball, shooting 43% from the floor. Doug Christie back in. Shot clock at four, and he'll slither with the rebound. d climbing down, and a foul called on Gary Trent, who just checked in the game for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, Doug Christie. Irvin Johnson, who picks up his second. Excuse me. Uh, sorry there, Kevin. Christie very upset. He thought he drew a lot of contact from Irvin Johnson as he drove that ball to the basket. Was just talking to Dick Vivetta there and said, what do I have to do to get to the foul line? Go back in there and make them call it again. And a try by Doug Christie. Just like that. When they miss a call, go right back in there. They know they missed the play before that. That one was just minor contact. The referees are good in this league. They recognize, you know, if you're going to go back in there and take that contact, I'll reward you for that. And Irvin Johnson, more importantly for Minnesota, picks up his third personal foul for the Timberwolves. Here's a little bump by Irvin Johnson the first time he got away with it. This time he didn't. The three-point play opportunity. Sacramento emotionally starting to get back into this game. At the free throw line, uh, Doug, is Doug Christie. Kevin Garnett is on the bench. Three-point play for Christie. KG is there as he has gone two of seven with four points and six rebounds. And Minnesota comes the other way, having missed nine of their last ten shots. And here's Sam Cassell, Gary Trent with the screen, and Cassell with a Stiakovic rebound. Minnesota for the game is shooting 37%. It's d -box, two of four. Brad Miller up the bench. And Miller hitting his first offering tonight. And yeah, see, Vladdy's a great passer out of that low post. Michael Olukandy's got to get his body into him, make it more difficult. Vladdy just stood there and picked him apart. you got to put pressure on him. Some Wolves have led by eight. Kings have led by as many as four. Right now, it's Sacramento by two. I was talking before about the insecurity of this Sacramento team. How would they view themselves tonight well you know you look in the mirror and I said tonight are they a cat looking in the lion and seeing a a, a uh, excuse me a cat looking in the mirror seeing a lion are they a lion in the mirror looking at a cat I mean they've got to come out with that ferocity of a lion That's, and, and I, I think they're starting to get that feeling back after a slow start a little candy with the miss Anthony Peeler's got the rebound and so far Sacramento is plus five and rebounding against the Timberwolves Here's Miller with Trent on him. Manson didn't play in game two. Trent played good. He plays tonight early. Cassell with the rebound on the miss outside by Christie. Kevin, the reason Gary Trent is in the game and not Madsen is see Cassell pull up and hit the little jumper is Flip Saunders feels like he needs more offense out there. They, if they don't guard Hassel, they very very seldom guard Hoiberg. They need another scorer out there, especially when Garnett is, is down and Ola Candy's on the floor. Garnett didn't have any personal fouls. He's just taking a breather. Leading scores, Djokovic has seven and seven for Sprewell. The quick double on Divac and a foul. And Ola Candy was trying to defend, and the former number one overall pick in the NBA draft out of Pacific is hit with his second. As Garnett comes back in the game, and you can see how they started, where they are now. Well, again, they get off to that great start, and I think Sacramento's picked up their level of defense. Uh, you know, Peters come in, did a nice job for them. Brad Miller's given them a nice lift off the bench, and when you look at the minutes, uh, Kevin, Sacramento's only playing seven guys. They play Brad Miller off the bench and Peeler. Minnesota's playing nine. If this goes to a seven-game series, could that be a factor? Yeah, absolutely. Penalty with 7.20 left now, as you see, Ronnie Devots. And you mentioned it before, Doug. He only averaged 14 minutes a game in the Dallas series. In this Timberwolves series, averaging 25 minutes per contest. Well, remember the last game that they won here in game five. They played the first four minutes of the game, and Brad Miller played the last 44. Did not even get into the game against Dallas. Uh-oh. Rebound by Hoiberg on a missed shot by a wide-open Peja Stiakovic, who has started two of eight. The shooting is way down in the playoffs as compared to the regular year. Cassell with the Stiakovic rebound. But see, that's what Page has been doing. Some defense, inside play, and rebounding. He's got five boards tonight. Yeah, he's averaging almost eight rebounds a game in the playoffs. It's Brad Miller. Healthier game by game, game by game. And that has been huge for the Kings. And that was too easy. But right now, Flip Saunders got to be thinking about if I don't get much from Ola Candy, I might have to go to Madsen. Because he's going to come with some energy and some toughness. Timberwolves have gotten 
three three-point hits in the game so far. Here's Hoiberg. He has offered one of those three-point shots. Shot clock at six. Oh, of handy. Siakovic with another rebound. And the Kings have only gone one of six shooting threes tonight. Doug Christie with the bad left foot. Very tough competitor, though, Kevin. He is a, he is a warrior on this team. You got the shot clock down to three. Devon's trying to spoon feed Christie. Ola Candy vacuums it in. And a three on three the other way with Sam Cassell. Christie and Peeler all over him. Hoiberg for three. Good! And this 31 year old refugee from the Chicago Bulls and the Indiana Pacers, who says he attributes all of his accuracy in the NBA to Reggie Miller and Chris Mullen because when he was with the Indiana Pacers these guys taught him how to shoot in the NBA and he was doing that with Wally Zerbiak the other day after Minnesota practice what great habits he's picked up he's a winner and he's playing for a winner tomorrow night on TNT at 10 30 Richard Jefferson scoring 30 points in the 82-64 New Jersey win over Detroit in game three game four eight o'clock Eastern tomorrow night on TNT and it's only fitting that Magic will carry the Olympic torch during one of its legs on the way to Athens for this summer's games. He was a gold medal winner on the Dream Team back in 1992. With Doug Collins and Cheryl Miller, Kevin Harlan in Sacramento. Well, Kevin, let's take a look here early in the game. Three-point field goals made. Minnesota has made three more, so they're plus nine points there. Second chance points are plus five. Points off turnovers, nine to two, they're plus seven. Sacramento winning the free throw line right now, but Sacramento have been very sloppy here with the ball handling early in this game. In the midst of our sixth tie, we've had two lead changes. Timberwolves have led by eight, Kings by four. Peeler for the lead, a three. And Anthony Peeler now beginning to score in this series for the first time, five points and three rebounds. You know, Kevin, the first two games, Minnesota's made nine more threes going into tonight. Then Sacramento they give them plus 27 in the first two games at the three-point line. And Olo Candy uncovered, puts it in. He's out there with Garnett. Castle, Hoiberg, and Cassell, and the Kings with Miller, Peeler, Weber, Bibby, and Doug Christie, the double on Bibby, and here's Chris Weber, win the game as four points, and try to get around the defense of Olo Candy with the shot clock down to nine. Weber is two of five. And they post Christie. Oh! With a Kevin Garnett, seventh rebound with his four points. You know, they've been giving that shot right around the top of the key all night long. Well, he has the ability to step out and make that shot. That's why Kevin Garnett in the fourth quarter, you should never be able to take that ball out of his hands because he has that ability to step out on the floor. Here he steps out and bumps Mike Bibby and gets the foul. And that's number one on the big ticket. Well, Kevin, you saw him come in as a young player when you were broadcasting in Minnesota. The big thing I've noticed with his shooting, remember how flat his shot yes, used to was. be when he came in? He's worked very hard. Kevin McHale has worked very hard with him getting that shot up. Nice trajectory as we see Kevin, the Hall of Famer, but he, he used to be very flat with that shot. Now he lifts it, and if he misses the shot, he gets a nice little roll up there, and he gets those soft touches sometimes. Well, before you hit that shot with a flat, uh, flat, hit that rim with a flat shot, and the ball just bounces everywhere. Well, and Kevin says, Kevin McHale says, he's, he's speaking from experience because when he entered the NBA out of the University of Minnesota, he had that very flat yes, level did. shot. Yes, he did. But, you know, that's Kevin Garnett going into the gym and saying, you know, teach me, work with me. And uh, Kevin McHale has to be very proud of the growth of this young man into being the MVP this year. Kings free throw, 7 of 9. Minnesota free throw, 2 of 2. Kevin Garnett with Bibby covering. The mismatch was there. And Garnett exploits in the Timberwolves by two. Well, just take your time, just back the guy down, get the little bump, and go up and shoot it. It's Bibby, two of three. Weber slides it inside to Miller. And he gets his own miss. Great hustle there by Brad Miller. Missed the easy one, didn't give up on the play. Here comes Kevin Garnett, eight points to lead the Timberwolves tonight with a nice hesitation inside. And Weber with his second rebound. And the Kings are plus seven in rebounding tonight. Anthony Peeler has caught fire. The number one three-point shooter in the NBA's regular season. Well, they really need him to make shots. He stretches the defense, especially when you play into the post with Weber. 
Burke for three. And a Christie rebound. Minnesota has to be very careful here. They've played great in this first half. The run by Sacramento to try to finish off this half. Kevin the up to always watch that. Sam Cassell with the foul. See the confusion. Michael Ola Candy could not get out there soon enough. It looked like Hassel and Hoiberg got confused on who was guarding whom on that particular play. See, that's what happens when you get the cross matches. Uh, you've got uh, Hoiberg and Hassel out there, and they're trying to guard Bibby, one of the other down before that time. Neither one could get to him because it was a transition play. And that's where those cross matches hurt you, Kevin. You've got to really talk. Cassell thought he had the foul, but they've changed it. They put it on Ola Candy, so he has three. Irvin Johnson has three fouls. And those are concerns for Minnesota. Only two on Christie. Anymore with even the slightest bit of trouble for the Sacramento Kings. How does that affect Minnesota with big players? Big in terms of size players with foul trouble this, this stage of the game. Well, it always affects you because that's the interior of your defense. And into Mark Madsen not playing in game two. Fouled by Brad Miller inside as he enters game three for the first time. Miller picks up a foul. It was it Weber? Weber was reaching in, and Weber picks up the foul. And Sacramento is on a 7 to nothing run. Well, you're going to love Mark Madsen. He plays 20 minutes in the first game, actually plays well. Comes back, does not play in game two. He says, I'm ready when my team needs me. They need him tonight. And Cliff Saunders has put him in the game. You got it, big boy, a 94-87 Miami win. They're jacked up down there. They've been drawing well in Miami, and that young team with a terrific Game 3 win over the Indiana Pacers. Well, the Pacers had set a playoff record. They'd won their first six playoff games by double-digit uh, points. They've been averaging 15-plus points per game winning, so uh, that's a, quite a win for Miami to go back and win that basketball game. But it's... Uh, we look here tonight, Kevin, we always talk about ending quarters, ending halves. Sacramento on a nice little run here. Minnesota coming out of this timeout. Got to find something good. Try to finish this half, but they've had a, they've had a nice first half. They just don't want to let this slip away from them. Here's Manson dug at the free throw line. Timberwolves as a team, 2 of 2 from the stripe. Sacramento 9 of 11. As Madsen fans, and at the stripe during the series, uh, he has only gone now 2 of 5 against Sacramento. You know, when you when you think of Minnesota, you would say, why wouldn't they get to the free throw line more? You see Madsen miss the second one. Really, they only have one guy, Sprewell, who's going to drive in there a lot. Kevin Garnett is a guy who's not, who doesn't draw a lot of fouls, so they're a jump-shooting team. That's one of the weaknesses. They don't get to the line. Sacramento Kings are shooting 47%, and they turn it over there for the eighth time, and Garnett into traffic, tangling with Vivi, and a Sacramento foul. Just your normal move for a guy 7-1 in the open quarter. 6-13, <laughs> as Kevin likes to hard, call himself. <laughs> I mean, in the open court, the guy's got two people back. He shakes the point guard, takes the ball behind his back. He admits he is not in his offensive rhythm right now. Tonight, Kevin Garnett has gone 4-10 from the field. But see, the thing about it is, I mean, he can beat you by getting 25 rebounds like he's done here before against Sacramento. The game in here, he... At 33 points, 25 rebounds. His fourth, his four highest rebounding games in his career come against this team. I mean, he is a brilliant all-round player. He blocked six shots the other night. So he puts his team in a position to win in the fourth quarter. Make no bones about it. Without this guy, Sam Cassell's shots in the fourth quarter don't mean anything. Absolutely. Garnett turns 28 in the middle of this month. Chris Weber. With Garnett right there and doubled by Manson with a foul. Garnett was leaning on him with 2.25 to play before halftime. And Kevin Garnett picks up his second foul. Hand on the hip. You're not allowed to put that hand down. See, the hand gets up there, the reach in. Now, sometimes it's hard to figure out what's a foul and what's not. I was watching the Detroit-New <laughs> Jersey game last night. That's one of the roughest games that I have ever seen. Weber walks to the line and misses a free throw. He missed a couple critical free throws in the fourth quarter of game two. You know, Kevin Garnett, uh, when he was growing up, he said his two favorite players were Magic Johnson, who's in the studio, and this guy at the line, Chris Weber. He said he really loved to watch these guys play basketball. 
The Sacramento King dog now for this series a plus 29 free throw attempts on top of Minnesota. Well, they're plus 29 there, and the difference from Minnesota is they're winning the battle at the three-point line. Here come the Timberwolves. They're shooting 40% for the field. And here is Freewell. Oh, Manson uncovered with a up high and down hard inside. Minnesota within two. The tail and Stojakovic, the left no oh. free, but he was able to maneuver down low. Stojakovic there to get another rebound. He now has eight tonight. And Sprewell, good transition defense by the Kings. Back there to meet Casales, Vivian, a little double by Weber. Going to free up a wide open shot though for Sprewell. When you have to go down and double team Casale in the post, somebody's going to be wide open. It's either going to be Sprewell or Hoiberg or Hassel or whoever they have on the perimeter. And that's why those guys are knocking down those threes because of the double teaming in the post. Freewell's got nine. He has put in seven here in the second quarter from Sacramento. Here is Anthony Peeler, who has got his stroke going tonight. With Cassell in his face. A tap by Hoiberg and picked up by Latrell Sprewell. Hoiberg saw, uh oh, there's Freewell losing the ball. Nice defense by Anthony Peeler. Well, he didn't give up on the play. He missed the shot and he hustled back, forced a turnover. Minnesota's first turnover in the last 18 minutes. Now only three for the game. Well, that's more of the way they played in the regular season. I don't know why they've been turning the ball over so much in the playoffs. They did it against Denver. They've done it against Sacramento. It's almost like they've been over anxious. Mike Pitty has now gone three of four from the floor. Well, Madsen didn't get out on that screen. He was on the wrong side of it. And with Bibby out there, you've got to trap him and force him to pass the ball. And you continue to think that Mike Bibby is the key for the Kings. They go inside for Cassell. And he's on by Stiakovich again. Oh, they got lucky there. <laughs> Wide open shot from Sam Cassell. Just missed it. Vivi. And Anthony Peeler for three. Rebound by Mark Manson. The Timberwolves have led by eight. And the Kings have led by as many as five and two to make one. Or pull up and shoot it. You know that in transition. That's where Weber's got to get out. I keep saying it over and over with Cassell. At the end of quarters, those two for ones coming down. You got to get out. You got to trap him. Difference of four seconds, the game clock and the shot clock as we wind down in a 46-46 ball game. Mike Bibby around the screen that got Sprewell on him, which proved to be effective in game two. Weber the miss, and now the Timberwolves have got to hustle, and here comes their seven-foot one point guard going to Sprewell. And missing at the buzzer, and we are tied at 46 at halftime. Well, a great first half. You had a lot of sloppy play from Sacramento with their passing. They fought back into it, got to the free throw line. Minnesota started out well. They had a little bit of a low period with their shooting. Finished the half nicely to get themselves back in the game. Sacramento led by five, 43-38 with about 3-11 left. And Minnesota goes on an 8-3 run to close out the first half and tie the game for the 10th time in the first half. So Ernie Johnson, the Timberwolves led by four at the end of one. We're tied right now. The Timberwolves have led by eight. The Kings have led by five. Only one player in this game is in double figures. That's Kevin Garnett. This is game three, best of seven Western Conference semifinal. We're tied at a win apiece as we take you to our TNT studios and Ernie Johnson. That's what the big three has done tonight. Minnesota beat Sacramento three of their four meetings and as Doug just said, twice in this building. But the Kings, remember, have the second best home record in the NBA in the regular year. They have not lost a playoff game this year, beating Dallas three times. And the Timberwolves have the number one road record at 27 and 14 in the NBA's regular year. I, I still believe it. You look at Stojakovic and Weber's numbers. Sacramento can win with them having a bad shooting night. They did that in game one. Those guys combined to shoot 11 of 31. Mike Bibby had the big game at 33. He only has four shots. He was four of 17 in game uh, in game two. They, they need him to come out and be very, very aggressive. And Doug, again, you always pay attention to closing out quarters for both teams in Minnesota 24-11 so far through the first half. It's Sprewell, Cassell, Garnett, Johnson with three fouls, and Hassel out there for Minnesota beginning the third quarter. Kevin Garnett from the field is 4 of 11. Christie with the rebound with Bibby, Divots, Stiakovich, and Chris Weber. Let's see if they try to get Mike Bibby here a shot early to start this game. This third period. It's Weber and a late arriving Irvin Johnson with a rebound inside by 
But Charles Sprewell, who has started the game from the floor, 3 of 12 with 9 points. Garnett's 10, leading all scores. You can see Bibby back to guarding Cassell, so he's going to try to go right in the low post against him. Cassell, short. Minnesota led by four at the end of the first quarter. We were tied, of course, at halftime at 46, where we stand right now. Knocked away by Sprewell Johnson. Here comes Sam Cassell. He had a career-high 20 points per game in the regular season. 34-year-old Cassell and a rebound by d -Bucks, who we think is 36. We're not certain. Both teams off the sluggish starts here to start this period. And here is the aforementioned Bwadi D-Box, who is seeing more time and is 3 of 5 with 8 points. He and Bibby share king high honors. He's such an emotional part of this team. He's the leader in that locker room. Mike Bibby, to me, is the guy who makes him go on the floor, but such respect for Vladi from his teammates. Hassel. And Christie with the later on defensive stand on Hassel, who continues just to shoot the ball so well in the postseason. He's about nine points over his regular season average in scoring in this playoffs well, this he, year. Kevin, he knows he's getting the shots because they're rotating off him to try to cover up the other players. And he's worked very hard, and there's no hesitation in his shot. Yankovic to Weber, and back to Peja, who tonight is two of nine. Doug Christie. And a rebound by Kevin Garnett, who has his ninth with his ten points. Cassell, wide open lane. Christie fell, and opened it up. Well, Doug Christie, remember, picked up two early fouls, so he's not guarding Cassell right now. That time he picked him up in the open floor. Dick Bavetta did not go for that little flop. How do you like the Sprewell coverage on Bibby in the last two games? He almost had a steal right there. He kicked it. Well, I, I like it because he's a bigger, stronger body, and he, when he gets screened, he keeps playing through the screens, and Mike Bibby knows he's coming. Uh, that's a good point. Cheryl, what do you have? It's interesting. Coach Saunders thought that his team played pretty well in the first half, did some positive things, and defensively was was pretty solid. He said second half, obviously, this is a Sacramento team that can go oh. on runs and drive the same drive kicks to the dirt. Excuse me, Doug Christie possibly get a three-point play, but he said this is a Sacramento team that can either go on runs and droughts. If they go on the runs, we have to find a way to contain them. If they have any droughts, we've got to make some runs, guys. Cassell picks up the foul. Well, you know, Cheryl, the way you do that on the, in a crowd like this with a team that goes on runs is you use your timeouts. Uh, to be able to try to calm the crowd down, to get a play, to come out on the floor, get your team a basket, and you depend on your execution, and you try not to turn the ball over. And Minnesota's doing a nice job taking care of the ball tonight. They only have three turnovers. Christie's on Sprewell Johnson with a little screen and a rebound by the Kings, who are plus nine in rebounding tonight. Away by Kevin Garnett. And a foul. Miscommunication there in the open court. Irvin Johnson, normally playing against Vladi Divas, did not get back. Kevin Garnett tried to get to him. This will be once again getting to that free throw line, Kevin. And Sacramento is doing a much better job getting there than Minnesota. Divas tonight, two at three. Kings have taken 14 free throws, and the Timberwolves have taken six. And Vladi at the strike. Wednesday night, Miami will take on Indiana, Sacramento against Minnesota. Those are on ESPN Thursday night on ABC. It's game five of L.A. and San Antonio. Of course, you'll see game four tomorrow here on TNT. I tell you, for a young sure. team, that Miami team has got a lot of heart. 17 straight wins now at home. They're struggling on the road in the playoffs, but at home, they have been very, very tough. 40% shooting from the floor for Minnesota. Stiakovic sticking on Sprewell. Garnett to Cassell and a three for Sam. And over the backboard at the clock. It's Sacramento's ball. Turnovers in this game. Minnesota's got three and Kings have nine. And again, you know, Kevin, Minnesota's a team that in the regular season, they were second in fewest turnovers. Yeah. They average under 13 turnovers, over 23 assists. They do a good job of moving the basketball, and they're a very good shooting team. And in the playoffs, they've turned it over uncharacteristically. Kings are shooting 42%, rebound by Sprewell. Trenton Hansel, he was free to fire. Well, see, what happened is Stojakovic felt like he was knocked down on the shot, so they were playing four on five defensively. Hassel normally guarded by Stojakovic. Nobody picked him up. Bibby is three of five, and Weber is two of seven. 
And then applying the defense right there. Hassel's watching Stiakovich on the baseline. Christie went out, duck inside. Weber with Garnett slipping. And that gave him nothing in front to guard it. Hassel again, he just hit the man. Christie late with the defense, and again he knocks it down. He's like playing horse out there. There's nobody guarding him, but again, that the commitment that Sacramento has made is to rotate up and take Garnett and to sell out of the game, and he's the beneficiary. So Doug Christie. You know, Doug Christie with Bobby Jackson gone is, is certainly now becoming the emotional leader of this team. But Doug Christie very upset. He feel like he's been hit on the arm on every shot. He was barking at referee Jimmy Clark during that possession. And Cassell being hounded and a knock away by Christie and Chris Weber at the other end. Chris Weber almost could not get to that ball. It's about as easy they as let him ball. so much on that play. Chris Weber almost looked back and said, hey, that was three years ago I could run like that. Don't throw that pass so far. Minnesota will take a timeout. The Kings tied with the Timberwolves at halftime. They've opened up a four-point lead. And Doug Christie has a Kings high and a game high. 12 points. He wears his emotions on his face and on his jersey. But he leads him emotionally in this series, which is tied at one apiece. And you can see tonight what they've done. 16 points on 7 of 11 shooting. And I was just thinking about what John Paxson must be thinking. Fred Hoiberg, Trenton Hassel, about Elton Brand, Brad Miller and Ron Artest. Those guys should all be Chicago Bulls right now. Can you imagine? No, I can't. <laughs> That's, uh, that is amazing. As Gasell slips it to the double team, Garnett, who looked one way and fed Urban Johnson the other. And Johnson now has eight points, two rebounds. And he was fouled by Chris Weber on the play, who is tagged with his second. Well, if you're going to foul, you got to foul him so he can't make the basket. This is one of those little touch fouls by Weber. And uh, you got you got to make the foul. Urban Johnson's not a great free throw shooter, so you got to make him step up and make two free throws. Now he has the opportunity for the three point play. So Urban Johnson with nine, a couple players with ten lead the Wolves, Garnett and Hassel, and 12 by Christie is a game high. Here is that scoring leader Doug Christie looking inside for the double team Weber back to Christie. This guy is really shooting the ball well. He's made some big shots for them. Game one, when they won on the road, he and Mike Bibby combined for 46 points. Christy, remember, hit the big three late in that game to sort of seal the deal. Hansel looks for spree well. And Stiakovich late with his defense. His spree now has a Minnesota high 11. I think Minnesota's whole thing is just stay close. If the game is close, we think we can beat you here in the fourth quarter. Kings of it 2-3. Stiakovic launching one right now. And so 2 of 9. The Kings are above the arc. Minnesota is 4 of 12. Stiakovic 2 of 11 for the game. Now 1 of 6 at the three-point line. He is not shooting the ball well at all in this series. And here comes Hansel. He played at Austin P. With Cassell trying to free himself from Vivi. Rebound by Weber. He's got four rebounds and nine points with Mike Bibby having eight points and six assists the other way. And a foul is called inside. And down on all fours was Latrell Sprewell. What, what did it mean, Doug, for the Timberwolves that it was not Kevin Garnett for Flip Saunders at the end of the game that won game two, but rather it was somebody else grabbing the headlines? You always think about the MVP Garnett, but that game it was Cassell in game two. Well, you know, they brought Cassell in to make the big shots. Kevin Garnett does everything else. He rebounds, he defends, he assists. You know, I think people expect him to score all the time. He's crazy once again. He's got the hot hand. But Kevin Garnett doesn't have to beat you necessarily with points. I mean, we saw uh, Ben Wallace last night put on some kind of show with like 24 rebounds and 15 points. And without him, Larry Brown said Detroit would have lost by 50 last night. It's Garnett with the double-double, 10 points and 10 rebounds against Devonts. And count it for two and a foul on Claudia Devonts, who has that look on his face. After the big ticket, the MVP takes it in and brings the Timberwolves to within one. Now before that shot, he and Sprewell were combined 8 for 25, just hangs in the air. And the importance of having big hands. I've always said, you know, Michael Jordan, one of the things he had, he had those huge hands. He could hold that ball out in one hand. 
create space and at the last moment go up and take that shot. You saw Garnett that time just hang in one air, excuse me, in the air with one hand. It's two three-point plays now we've seen on touch fouls by the Kings. Garnett three of three from the line and 19 of 21 in the series from the free throw line. Bibby oh, cast the lever. Garnett got in there with the block. He's now got four. He's got ten in the last two games. Sam Cassell. Right. And there is Weber. I think Bibby's got to start looking for a shot. He's looking to pass so much right now. Christie does have the hot hand. And a rebound by Kevin Garnett, taken away by Doug Christie. He's got the momentum. Debox back to Christie inside. But Garnett was there. Knocked away by Irvin Johnson. A deflection by Garnett with the shot clock resting at 10. Here's Bibby. He's only three of six. Foul on Mike Bibby. Strigo's done a nice job. He's kept his body in front of him. Kevin, we talked about he's a bigger player that he has to shoot over. And more importantly, when he gets screened, he doesn't stop playing. Very difficult to play screen roll with Kevin Garnett. This is Mike Bibby's third foul. But Garnett is so good at playing the screen roll. You saw Sprewell jump to the one side. And right now he's done a nice job of, of keeping Mike Bibby in front of him and not letting him break down the defense. And you talk about that adjustment from game one to game two is Sprewell gives you, as you mentioned, that, that extra length. And then you were telling before when they switch then, he starts a big body on him. Well, what happens if they want to switch the screen roll? Garnett can jump out and play him, and Sprewell big enough to slide down there in front one of the bigger players. So, you know, it's helped them either if they want to switch or if they want to trap the pick and roll. Good numbers on the big three for each team tonight. Here's Urban Johnson to Kevin Garnett with 13 points. Trenton Hassel has 10. Known for his defense, but he's been very offensive minded in this series. Miller's in the game for Sacramento. It's Sprewell. Good fake on Stiakovich with a jab and a drop. Kevin Garnett! And the Timberwolves by two. They've led by eight. Hoys right now, Sacramento getting a little bit rattled here, a couple bad calls. Let's see Garnett jumping out to pick up the foul against Bibby. But this is where you have to show Hoys. The offensive rebound. Sprewell looks like he's trying to guide this shot. That's that little medium range shot. But Garnett just cleans up the offensive rebound. Rick Adelman saying, look, we're not going to get up on these offensive or get on these defensive backboards. We can't give up second shots. Well, we got a story now because Garnett's got four fouls as the Kings fans have thrown things on the floor for the second time tonight, I might add. Yeah. That's, Gary Trent comes in the game with Hoiberg for Minnesota. You know, I, I've been here a lot. This is a, a crowd that's very loud. I've never really seen this crowd throw no, things on the floor like either. this. It's a very, very good crowd, a very noisy, but all it takes is one person up there with too much to drink to throw something out on the court that ru ruins it for everybody. Let's write this down, Kevin. 347 to go. Minnesota with a two-point lead. Can they hang tough? You got Garnett on the bench with fouls, and you're resting Sam Cassell right now. Can Sacramento make a push? There's Cassell. He is four of 14 with nine points. Free throw shooting tonight, and that was a an interesting facet because of the great number of attempts that the Kings are putting over the Timberwolves tonight. They're plus eight with a series plus 30 in terms of free throw attempts. A wide open Weber Johnson late. And Stiakovic had it taken away by Hassel of Minnesota with three and a half to play in the third. And Sprewell. Bibby guarding it, but not very well. Now Sprewell really is looking to shoot the ball tonight. That's 16 attempts already. We just passed the midway point of the third period. It's Bibby, and Christie's got the hot hand, especially here in the third. And Mike Bibby, Sprewell in the defense. Hoiberg with the rebound. By the way, one more note on Garnett. He is the only player in the game with four fouls right now. Hoiberg, another three by Fred Hoiberg, who comes off the bench tonight, and he has gone three of four from above the arc as Weber drives, and Hoiberg hits the deck as Minnesota is riding a 10 to nothing run. Boy, Freddie Hoiberg, how impressive is he? You give him an open shot, he's knocking him down. The most important thing, his team has such confidence in him right now. When you can bring a guy like that in who hits the shot and plays defense, what a weapon.
Welcome back to Arco Arena, where Minnesota has a seven-point lead over Sacramento. It's a good look at Wally Zerbiak, who hasn't played since Game 3 loss at Denver in the first round after fracturing three bones in the small of his back today. This was him at shoot-around, and Wally told me that he is feeling much better. He's running, he's jumping. He said if it was left of him, he would definitely play in Game 5 back in Minnesota. What was interesting, guys, he did tell me that he has the same injury as Vikings quarterback Dante Culpepper, but he said Culpepper might have been able to come back sooner because he's a quarterback, he stays in the pocket, and he was able to wear protection like a flak jacket. He said he couldn't, he doesn't really have that option because he doesn't want it to, to really um, restrict his movements. Guys? Yeah, he's big like uh, old Dante is for the Minnesota Vikings. The interesting thing is it's Hoiberg taking the place of Serbiak, who missed a lot of time in the regular season, has missed time in the postseason. And for Hoiberg, th think about this, the kind of people he has guarded in these playoffs. 5'5", five, five Earl Boykins at Denver, all the way to 6'10", Beja Stiakovic with the Sacramento Kings. Well, that's, you know, that's why you're a valuable player. You can play multiple positions, and more importantly, your teammates trust you. You know, this guy was recruited to go to Nebraska to play football. Yes. That's a tough guy. And uh, so his teammates believe he's bringing the ball up the floor now. So it's Hoiberg, Gary Trent, Johnson, Hassel, and... Sprewell almost a steal by Crystal. Shot clock is at 10. Hoiberg, who's not getting three from above the arc. And Hassel, again, Hassel comes up with a big shot. He is 7 of 10. And he has hit his last five shots from the floor. It's Diakovic who's been struggling and continues that way 2 of 12, but gets his own miss and kicks it out to Bibby. He's three of seven. Rebound by Miller, an offensive board there. And Christie for three. Fouled by Trent. And Christie to the line. A flip Saunders got to be going, what are you doing fouling a three-point shooter? These are things that turn games around. Now you got a chance to step up, cut a seven-point lead to four. But Christie, normally a very good free throw shooter. I know he missed a two at the end of the game the other night, but he normally shoots about 87%. So. You would expect him to step up and knock these free throws in. And Christie hits that. Four of four, make it five of five, 17 points. Get an all access look at the NBA playoffs. Tune in to the NBA TV playoff show, Destination Finals, every weeknight, six o'clock only on NBA TV. You know, Kevin, you look at the numbers here for Sacramento. Pages Stoyakovich is two of 12. Weber is 4 of 11. Those two guys, 6 of 23. Bibby is 3 of 8. Wow. And he only has 8 points. And it's sort of amazing. They're only down, they're only down 4 points. I remember Minnesota has stretched his lead out with Kevin Garnett sitting down with 4 fouls and Sam Cassell resting so he can finish the fourth quarter. Bibby is on Hoiberg. They got Anthony Peeler in the game. with screen by Trent opening up Spreewell's shot. And Spree has gone 6 of 17 for 15. Well, he got off to a slow start. Remember, he was one of nine, so he's picked it up at five of his last eight. Johnson with three fouls, guarding Chris Weber, who is four of 11. Nice pass inside. That is the beauty of Chris Weber's game, the ability with that soft pass to hold it and snap it to open cutters. Well, you got to keep moving, though, with, when he gets the ball. You can't stand. Sometimes the team's standing and watching. Christie's got 14 in the quarter and a game high 21. Nice fake, a little jam by Hoiberg. Count it. Oh, hold on, foul was called. As Bibby will pick it up. And that's the fourth on Mike Bibby. Fred Hoiberg with a nice job. He's been hitting every shot out there, so when he shows the ball, you got to get out to him. Bibby with his fourth foul, so foul starting to mount up for both teams. Stoyakovich is going to come back in the game, see if he gets Bibby out here. Basket did not count from Fred Hoiberg. Stoyakovich back in. There goes Mike Bibby. So he has four. Garnett has four, and both are on the bench. Trenton Hassel, he's playing possessed. And this is how you win playoff series. You have a guy like that come through for you when some of your guys are struggling? He's got 10, Doug, in this third quarter and 14 in the game. Nice steal, three on two, led by Spoolwell, and he goes by Miller. And the Timberwolves lead it 
77-69. They equal their biggest lead. Freeze put in eight points. It was a two-point game when Garnett left. They, they've increased the lead by six. That's eight points in this quarter and 17 for the game for Sprewell. Weber. Wow. Turnover number 12 for the Kings and four. Only four for Minnesota. This is where they get themselves in trouble. They throw the ball to Weber and they stand around and watch him play. You got, you got to get him up and you got to start moving the basketball, cutting and slashing. And right now they've gotten themselves into a rut again, and Minnesota's taking advantage of it. And no fouls to give either way with Sprewell working on Miller. And Gary Trent then is some of the odd guy out left free, and he has to dig his way inside. Comes up with a huge shot, and the Timberwolves have their biggest lead tonight. When they get scoring from guys like Gary Trent, you know things are really cooking. You just look at the guys who filled in off the bench yeah. for them. Christie's going to get a charge here. Because, Doug, you mentioned, you said when Garnett goes out with his fourth personal foul, 347, Minnesota led by two. Now they're up by 10. And Cassell's been resting this whole time, and he's their Mr. Fourth Quarter. Yep. And we've talked to him. Here's something else thrown out onto the floor. You know, it's, it's interesting, but, but Sacramento, I think what these fans are thinking about, the heartbreak that this team has, has caused them over the last few playoff series. It seems like they get so close, and whether it be a Robert Ory three or a Chris Weber, you know, knee injury, something happens, and right now they're down 10. They have to regroup. They have to get themselves over here. Minnesota, a very, very confident team. Minnesota has won both regular season games here. Trenton Hassel offers a 10-point third quarter. The Kings led by three halfway through that third. Minnesota closes on a 20-7 run, and they lead by 10, their biggest lead tonight in game three of this Western Conference semifinal. for the Sacramento Kings. It's been one disappointment after another. The Kobe Bryant shot right there. Robert Ory coming up bid. Eventually knocked out of the Western Conference Finals. Last year against Dallas, game two. Chris Weber injury. Uh, so, Doug, we have seen a succession of these series-altering type things that have happened to this franchise, and the Maloof brothers who own this team watched in game two a, a, a dissipation of a 10-point lead with 4-11 to play. Any residuals of that lingering tonight in game three? Well, you know, what's interesting. I was watching that game at home, and I saw with 4-11 to go, Minnesota was walking up, off that floor, and the look on their face is like, you know, we're, we're going to go down here 0-2. In the strong finish, and they've come out here with a lot of poise. We'll see if they can hold on, and we'll see if Sacramento has a way to find out to get back into this game. Timberwolves have 33 points in that third quarter. Miller misses, and Trent grabs onto it. A 33-point third quarter for Minnesota. Highest scoring for the postseason for them, and there you see how they've closed out quarters in the game tonight. That, that adds up to 44 to 18. That's plus 26 at the end of quarters. Minnesota has it eight of the last time. Spreewell makes it nine of ten as Spree has put in a Timberwolves high 19 points. And all this with Garnett and Cassell sitting. And of course, this is lingering from what they did the other night. In game two, an outside shot going in. And Siakovic hit, but it meant so much to the Timberwolves to have someone other than Garnett win the game. Will that be the same case the very next game, game three? It's Sprewell, who I don't know if he wanted to pass or not, but it was loose, and Trent vacuums it in, and Miller has a hard foul inside on Gary Trent, who is slow to get up. You see, when you're, when you're struggling, it looked like Sacramento had a steal there. They started, and it went off the foot. Now watch this. It looks like Sacramento's ball. Look who ends up with two guys go together. The ball kicks loose, and looks Trent standing underneath the basket to get the two free throws. Those are things that are happening when things seem to be working against you. you got to play through those, Kevin. You can't hang your head. you got to keep fighting. But you got to do it on the defensive end. And right now, Sacramento, this is the worst defensive game they've played in a long time. They have been pretty good defensively over the last three or four games. Larry Trent, the first time he has been to the free throw line in this Sacramento series for the Timberwolves, who have led by 12. The Kings have led uh, as many as five. This will be the ninth free throw for Minnesota. Now they are six of nine. Sacramento, 17 of 21. 
From the line for the game, it's Trent out there with Hassel, Johnson, Hoiberg, and Sprewell. That's the Minnesota Five. It's Peeler and Vivian, the Kings backcourt, with Miller, Stojakovic, and Weber. I still say if they're going to get back in this game, there's a big break. Trent missed them both. Mike Vivi. Can Mike Vivi find a way to shake himself loose from Sprewell, who's done a terrific job? Two regular season wins in this building for the Timberwolves. The second hardest building to win in in the regular season. And inside, pulling the trigger, was Brad Miller off the bench with eight points and five rebounds. Now, Flip's going to have to use his timeouts very wisely here. He cannot let this crowd get in it. He cannot let Sacramento get on any runs. When will we see Garnett and Cassell? And on the road, timeouts is how you control the game. Absolutely. Get your timeout set up to play. Trent the screen on Bibby, and Sprewell is fouled, and Bibby picks up number five. This is what the big three have done in the fourth quarters in this series. Cassell has been terrific. He's 8 of 15. Sprewell and Garnett have combined 2 of 13. So Cassell has been the guy who's made the big shots. We saw it the other night. He had 9 at the end of three quarters, had 10 in the fourth, finished with 19, all the big shots. Mike Bibby, though, with a very costly foul, shooting a jump shooter. Sprewell is going to go to the line here for two. Minnesota led by four at the end of one. We were tied at halftime. A 10-point lead for the Wolves coming to the fourth. They lead it now, 81 to 73. Now let's take a look at our Gatorade X factor of the game. And playoffs wide, coast to coast, influenced the most by point guards. Well, Mike Bibby has been the source of concern after the big game one. He had a tremendous series against Dallas. They've locked in on him the last couple games. And Sprewell's done a terrific job. He keeps his body in front of him, draws the charge, forcing him to take some tough shots. And look what's happened in these games here that you've seen the changes in. Game one, Mike Gibby with 33. Sprewell guards him in game two. He has 10 tonight. They've made that change. How about the the uh, Tony Parker, the great two games. And in game three, the Lakers really swarmed him. He scored eight. And how about Chauncey Billups last night? They move over. Kerry Kittles to play him. He goes from 28 to two. So it's interesting. It's sort of been the playoffs of the point guards and, and how it's changed series. Tonight, Dwayne Wade. Had a great fourth quarter. Remember the two game-winning shots he yep. hit in the New Orleans series in games one and in games five. But the point guards have been the stories here in the playoffs. Well, Bibby had his last field goal come with about a minute left in the first half. Scoreless here in the second half. And with the meager eight points and six assists, that has hurt the Kings tonight. They got Christie playing the point. Peeler has come in as the two. And here's Stiakovic, a poor shooting, 3 of 13. Miller is 4 of 7, now 4 of 8. Sprewell, who had 37 in this building earlier in the regular season, leads Minnesota with 21. Hoiberg has knocked in 3 above the arc. See, Minnesota right now does not have a point guard on the floor. They're playing with Sprewell, Hoiberg, and, and Hassel. They're going with a defensive team with the lead here. And Mark Madsen has come in, and Miller has the loose ball. Stiakovic, there's a whistle and a foul. And they call this on Anthony Peeler for the second time. How about this, though? Sam Cassell been sitting on this bench this entire time. Flip Saunders now going again with Trenton Hassel, Sprewell, and Hoiberg on the perimeter. It's their better defensive team, and with a lead, he's going defense right now. Here's Spree, 8 of 19, 6 rebounds and 4 assists. And out to Hassel, who goes into Miller and slashes his way inside. Madsen couldn't get it, but did draw the foul as he was tangling with Weber underneath. Now, in the Denver series, Madsen and Garnett played very, very well together. We saw it also in game one. Madsen came in, and you can see, instead of going with Ola Candy, Flip Saunders tonight is going with Mark Madsen. Here comes Sam Cassell at the 925 mark, and Trenton Hassel will leave. So now that true point is back out on the floor. The Timberwolves are shooting 48% from the floor in the game. The Kings, 42%. Wolves have been averaging about 45% from the field. And tonight, definitely out shooting Sacramento. Peeler looking for Miller and a foul. And Cassell, who just got off the bench, picks up the foul. It's going to be a very interesting nine minutes here for Sacramento. In a variety of ways. In a, in a variety of ways to see what they can do at the end of this game. Weber short. Hoiberg with the rebound. Rebounding tonight. Minnesota is minus eight. Seven for 25 now for Stoyakovich and Weber. 
That's what they've been riding. Hoiberg, great screen by Newsom. Hoiberg knocks down his fourth. A disgusted Kings general manager Jeff Petrie has watched his team fall behind by their largest deficit tonight, 13 points. Approaching eight and a half to play in the game. Miller and Peeler with the Miller screen on Cassell and a rebound by Manson who comes off that bench and brings hustle and energy. Well, that's why they signed him. That's why Kevin McHale went out and got him. He said, I need somebody who's going to come in here, throw himself around, play with energy. When he doesn't play, be a team guy. Here's Kevin Garnett with 15 points. Hoiberg for three again. He's knocked off balance. Nothing called. And here comes Christie. He has 21 along with Cassell's defense. Miss right there. Rebound by Christie. Everything's a quick jump shot for Sacramento right now, Kevin. The first guy who's getting it is letting it go. Mike Bibby's checking into the game here. I'm sure that uh, Rick Adelman's saying, look, I can't go any longer. I'm down 13. Doesn't do me any good to have him sitting over here with five fouls because by the time I put him back in the game, it's going to be too late. But all jump shots right now for Sacramento, nothing going to the basket. They, they've got to find a way. Now, Minnesota's whole thing is take away Sacramento's layups. That's their whole game plan. That's, that's like three fouls in a row on Cassell. Is it right. about a minute something? And now he's got four. He just came off the bench, and now he's got four fouls as Sacramento is trying to concoct something on offense. They've missed their last four shots. And Sam with a uh, smile on his face. Stiakovic. Lost it. Garnett has it. Turnover number 15 for the Kings. And Spreewell panged by Miller at the other end. And Spree will go to the line. And Brad Miller is hit with his second foul tonight. Stiakovic. And we saw this in the Dallas series. Struggling from the field tonight nine points compared with the regular season average of 24 points Well going going into the game tonight his numbers against this team He was 13 of 36 two of nine from the three-point line and They they have swarmed him tonight. They you know, they've had a hand in his face Hassel Hoiberg whoever's guarding him got a hand in his face and Remember we were in here the last game uh, like it was April 8th when Minnesota won in here to really help seal the best record in the West I asked Flip side is when you play Sacramento, what do you try to do? They're such a great shooting team. He said, we try to take away their layups. If they beat a shooting jump shot, so be it. And if you look at it tonight, they've taken away all their layups and their easy baskets, making them a jump shooting team. So the Kings with it, facing their largest deficit of the series, Mike Bibby. And Garnett volleyballs it over to Madsen. Here comes Sam Cassell. The Timberwolves are on a 7 to nothing run. Sprewell has been the key with a deft move on Christie and knocked out of bounds and 15 on the shot clock. Sprewell with a game-high 23 points. I mentioned earlier he had 37 in this building back in December. Well, he got off to a slow start, but the thing I love, how about his energy? Yeah. That's a guy who's well into his 30s. He's been guarding Mike Bibby the whole time. He's guarded uh, Stoyakovic some. Look at the energy he has playing offense. Rebound by Weber. Sprewell's only been averaging 10 points in this series. But tonight, like we said, 23, and here comes Bibby. Sacramento is not hit from the field in over three minutes. Away from the ball, Cassell and Christie. Is that another foul on Cassell? Oh. I mean, that's like four fouls and how many minutes? Like two plus minutes? He just came off the bench. He's now got five. And that's going to bring Trent Hassel off the Minnesota bench. But he's committed four of them here. He's going to get Sacramento in the penalty by himself. Looks to me like they're shooting free throws. This could be really critical here. In a minute, 57 seconds, he picked up four fouls. Well, Kevin, more importantly, 7.22 to go. Sacramento has been struggling to score. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to shoot free throws the rest of the quarter. They can get themselves back in the game here, but what are they trying to do? They run him down on the block, picked up three fouls down there trying to guard Christie on the post. <laughs> you see Jerry Seasting with his arm around Sam Cassell, trying to calm him down a little bit. Sam, very emotional. Well, he had 40 in game one, he had 19, and all those great eight points in the last couple minutes in game two to win it for Minnesota. Tonight, Sprewell has taken that place, and here comes Garnett. Garnett becomes their point guard now with this team on the floor. Sheds Miller drives inside Kevin Garnett. And Minnesota's got their biggest lead of the series and, of course, the game at 15. Minnesota's playing in another gear. It's like they're playing at 78 and Sacramento's at 45, maybe 33 right now. Weber trying to shift gears inside. He's in a straight jacket with Madsen and Garnett. As Kevin Garnett has put in tonight 17 points and grabbed 12 rebounds and a 
An authoritative move right there. You know, all season long you've talked about the San Antonio Spurs, the constant being Tim Duncan, but it's always been a, a player or two that adds to a, a, a San Antonio win like Parker or Malik Rose or Turkaloo or, or Bowen or whoever. Well, it's kind of the same story in some ways with Minnesota, especially as these playoffs have evolved. Well, the one thing you know, you're going to get uh, Kevin Garnett. He's going to give you probably before the game's over 20-plus points. He's going to give you somewhere 15 to 16 rebounds. He's going to block two or three shots. But what they've done is they've added to this team is they've added a big game shooter in Sam Cassell. And so he's taken the pressure off Garnett to be the, doesn't have to be the guy to make the big shots. Spreewell will take big shots. When you look at this right now, the difference is Hoiberg and Hassel, what they have brought to this team in the playoffs really has changed the whole face of this team, especially with Zerbiak being injured. Absolutely. And Hoiberg has done a great job taking the place of Zerbiak. And Hoiberg's got the ball, and he's... Knocked in four threes tonight. Miller trying to dance with Garnett. That's tough because when Kevin kicks up his heels, baby, it is tough to dance the same Watusi down low. Well, you know, the fact that he missed five and a half minutes of that period with fouls, he's rested now. He's ready to finish this quarter. Bibby and Weber. And Chris Weber has 15 points in the game. Christie's got a Kings high 23, and Sprewell's got a Timberwolves high 23. Garnett bringing the ball up the floor. Weber can't pressure him, so he'll initiate their offense. Go right in the post. Halfway through the fourth. Sprewell for three. And look at the hustle of Hassel. And here come the Kings with Bibby. You know they got a run left in them someplace. Will Bibby ignite it? Or will Stojakovic ignite it? Got to get a timeout here. Good call by Flip Saunders. Sacramento is such an explosive team. They can go on droughts, but they can also go on big runs. The 10-point game still almost half the quarter left. Mike Bibby with a penetration, and Sacramento waiting for Stojakovic to make some of these shots. He buries it. They're still alive. Tonight from Sacramento, the 2004 NBA playoffs on TNT are being brought to you by Sky Sports. The new low car of ultra premium malt beverage with the taste of citrus and cranberry. By Hyundai, visit NBA.com and enter to win a new Hyundai Santa Fe. By Goodyear Assurance, featuring triple tread technology. And by the new Sprite Remix Berry Clear. It's time now for Fast on Their Feet, presented by Lamisil. Well, who better to show us than Kevin Garnett? He's fresh. He got a rest on the bench. Five and a half minutes with a foul. The little whirling dervish jumper over the top of Brad Miller. Brad Miller cannot handle that kind of quickness. Sacramento cut the lead to 10. But interesting, you know, as I look at the stat sheet, Kevin, Hassel and Hoiberg have shot 11 for 17 tonight. They have 26 points. Weber and Stojakovic, 9 of 28 for 27 points. So two of the best scores for Sacramento are being matched and outshot by Hassel and Hoiberg. And you can see Minnesota winning the battle in the paint. They've gotten 13 off of turnovers, more than Sacramento, and they have watched the Kings from the free throw line, shoot 11 more times and have the advantage there in terms of made free throws, but that is not deterred the Wolves, who have led by as many as 15 and trailed by as many as five. Now, normally if Cassell was in the game, they would go to him here. Let's see if they try to free up Garnett. And here's Fred Hoiberg as Garnett trying to set his screen. Weber is on Kevin Garnett. Blows by him and glides in with ease. That was easy. Evan Garnett's got six in the quarter and 21 for the game and playing with four fouls. Stojakovic across the lane. Madsen got a hand on the ball. And Hassel tried to throw it. And Madsen gets it back. And here comes Freewell with the Minnesota high 23. Again, Kevin Garnett is going to run the team. The Timberwolves have hit six threes and the Kings have hit three above the arc tonight. The difference of nine points. KG over a late arriving Christie and an offensive rebound by Trenton Hassel. Minnesota is well behind minus, oh, minus seven offensive rebounds tonight. Well, second shots normally lead to points, and you're going to see Hoiberg here. Oh. More importantly, you get burned more clock. So you, you use clock, you get an offensive rebound, you use some more, and you get to the free throw line. Kevin Garnett. Again, the quickness. Weber cannot cover him out here. Somebody's got to come over and guard the basket. You see, Trenton Hassel did a great job. He sealed Brad Miller 
underneath the basket so no one could defend the shot. So nice play there by Hassel off the basketball. As Burnett just went right to the front of the rim. Hoiberg has not missed a free throw in the playoffs. Which continue tomorrow night on TNT as the Nets take on the Pistons. Game four, Lakers and Spurs tomorrow, TNT. Eight o'clock will be the coverage. Then Friday, a pair of game five starting at seven o'clock. New Jersey playing Detroit, Sacramento, Minnesota. That is on TNT. Inside, Mike Diddy. He's got ten. With eight assists, his first points of the second half. Sprewell, Manson, when Mark Manson gets that kind of shot away, you know things are rolling in the Timberwolves by 14 points. You should have seen the assistant coaches from Minnesota when he did. I was watching their bench. Mike Vinny with the left hand off the glass and down. Well, Minnesota cannot relax because we know Sacramento can put points on the board. They're capable of running off 10 or 12 points in a hurry. Mike Bibby, and you know what? I'm going to take this game into my own hands here. I've been in foul trouble. I've been you know, struggling to get off offensively. Five quick points. But now they've got to do it with some defense. They have got to get some defensive stops. Hassel, Madsen, Hoiberg, Sprewell, and Garnett playing the point at seven foot plus. On Garnett. Will we give him any help here defensively? Nope. Kevin Garnett schools him inside. Well, so much for Kevin Garnett not scoring only one only but one basket here in the fourth period in the two games. That's not the case tonight. Tibby across the lane with Miller, Christie, Weber, and Stojakovic. Hassel. This crowd is stunned right now. I'm telling you, it all started. The other night, that last four minutes and 11 seconds is haunting this team right now. Okay, you give a team an extra chance to come off the mat. Nice rejection by Bibby. How about the presence of mind there yeah. by Hoiberg? Now they got another 24 seconds. Now they can burn 48 seconds on this possession. And the offensive rebound still heavily favoring the Sacramento Kings. It was free well and an open Trenton Hazel. Rare miss for him and a rebound by Brad Miller, who's now got seven with eight points. Here comes Bibby, 13 points, 5 of 12. Chris Weber, 5 of 14. And Garnett, boy, just tapped it beautifully to himself. What's Chris Weber doing shooting a three out there? I mean, it's almost three minutes to go in the game. That's a giveaway shot. You sound like that shot. You sound like John Thompson. John Thompson would just that would drive him crazy about Weber's game. I mean, you're in the penalty. You're in the penalty. Get to the free throw line. Stop the clock. Mark Manson, an unlikely source of energy offensively. He does it on the defensive end, but this time is up with the sledgehammer, and that's what the Timberwolves are delivering to the Kings on their home court in Sacramento in Game 3. Minnesota's played with that kind of urgency tonight. 187, they lead right now. And so we, one of the main storylines coming in tonight with the hangover of losing a 10-point lead with about four to play in Game 2. Linger on to tonight. It looks like it has. Well, you got to give Kevin. You got to give Minnesota a lot of credit. They came in and got off to a great start. They had a lot of poise. But I thought from the start, this crowd was somewhat subdued. And you know what? They've had their heart broken by this team about three straight years in the playoffs. And you look at the numbers. I mean, Weber and Stojakovic tonight have combined nine of thirty. Hassel and Hoiberg eleven for twenty. They've gotten production from Madsen off the bench. From Irvin Johnson. The Cassell's had a very quiet game, and this guy, Kevin Garnett, has been great. Slippin calls a timeout, and he got it away. Kevin Garnett alertly just lost his footing. He's an MVP, not yet 28 years of age, with a very heady play, a tremendous presence of mind. As we're seeing something that you rarely see in Sacramento. This is one of the best venues in the league, but fearing. Dread as their team could fall behind two games to one in this best of seven Western Conference semifinal. Timeout. Place right now. Madsen's been great. Fred Hoiberg has been terrific. As Trenton Hassel also has shown some offense. And Hassel tonight, 7 of 12, 14 points, 5 assists, and 3 rebounds. And Hoiberg has knocked him four above the arc and put in a career playoff high 14 points. Kevin Garnett with 23 and 14. And Sprewell 
Another offensive rebound. They, 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 took, they took that shot at three on the clock. So there's another time they can burn almost 48 seconds of the walk. Three well trying to go so fast. Five Good. turnovers. Only five for the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight. That's a terrific number. Especially when they've been turning it over almost 16 times a game in the playoffs. They have 13 more turnovers coming into tonight than did the Kings, who have 15 turnovers tonight. So now for the series, only minus three in that category. Oh boy, hey. Weber's got 15, Stiankovic a dismal 4 of 15, and Bibby has gone 5 of 12. Page of Stiankovic, dropped open, and he's got 14 points with two minutes to play. Now, if you're Minnesota, the one thing you don't want to do is allow Sacramento to have anything good happen in this last two minutes. You don't want to put them in a position where they feel good about going into game four. You want to have them totally discouraged. Bad taste in the mouth. Well, you know what? This is... See Hassel going to the basket here in uh -oh. a turnover. And Stiakovic and Bibby for three. Uh -oh. Now watch out for Sacramento. Turn the tables on the Timberwolves, much like Minnesota turned it on the Kings in game two. It is an eight-point game with plenty of time left. So the reason I said that, Kevin, about Minnesota, you see Stoyakovic just hits a basket, then Bibby follows it up with a three. Obviously, two critical guys to their team. But if Minnesota goes on to win this game, during the regular season, Sacramento was 34-7 and seven here. Two of the seven losses to Minnesota. Now you come into the playoffs. They were undefeated at home. They lose here tonight. That would be three losses of eight that they've had all year in this building administered by Minnesota. And that, in turn, has given Minnesota an unbelievable confidence just coming into this series. You know when you can win, and probably the most difficult floor in the league is Garnett hits right there, and KG has gone a pristine 4 of 4 from the strike tonight. We, we have game five Friday night. In Minnesota all right Kevin I'll be very honest with you I was watching the game the other night and when Christie laid the ball in the basket to go up 10 and I saw Minnesota's body language I didn't know that there would be a game five now it's gonna look like Minnesota's turned the tables and, and, go, time out. and go home with at least the home court advantage and who knows what's gonna happen on Wednesday but there is still a buck 36 to play here tonight as the Timberwolves have a timeout remaining, and the Kings have a full and a 20 left. Kings down by nine. Timeout. Here are some reasons why the Minnesota Timberwolves were the number one seed in the playoffs out of the Western Conference. Well, opponent field goal percentage on the season, 41%. They were fourth behind Detroit, Indiana, and San Antonio. Point differential, they were fourth. They were tied for first with Indiana for the best road record. And look what they shoot, free throw percentage. They're a very good free throw shooting team. They're fifth. These are critical stats. When you start talking about being a team that can win in the playoffs, Kevin McHale, if his team can hold on here for a minute 34, has to feel very proud about what his team did at the end of game two and what they've done to come in here tonight to possibly steal back this home court advantage. Sacramento is shooting 43% from the field. Madsen is on Bibby. They got Cassell back in the game against Christie. A bump into Sprewell and a foul. And it could go on either Sprewell or Cassell. Looks like... Sam Cassell picks it up. That's number six, and he's gone. He was only in the game, what, four, five, six seconds? Well, I think he picked up five fouls in about two minutes and 20 seconds. And, and, and one, one fifty yeah. exactly right, and now he's gone. Well, you know what's interesting? If you're Rick Adelman, you have to say going in to game four, if they're going to play Sprewell on Bibby, then do you run Christie down into the post and maybe get him in foul trouble early in the game? Christie, he missed a couple of clutch free throws late in the game in Minneapolis on Saturday. Misses right there. So in late game situations, Christie now is one of four from the strike the last two games. We have not seen Vladi here late in the game. It's, uh, it's been a very disjointed night for Sacramento. That with 24 points, hounded by Peja Stiankovic, and here's Fred Hoiberg. And Mike Bibby is on him. Who's the point here? Is Garnett the point yes, guard? Yes, he is. Right now, you just want to keep the ball moving, use the clock. 
Make sure you get a shot that hits the rim, and you don't want to do that. Turn it over. Well, Minnesota's seventh steal. Mike Bibby for three. It's amazing, isn't it? I'm telling you, the games in the NBA, when you're ahead, will never end. They don't have to foul now. They don't need to foul. 59 seconds to go. They're going to get the ball back. And Christie knocked it out of bounds. Shot clock at 16. See, you don't want to turn it over because this is what happens when you turn the ball over. That's twice now. Bibby's got spot up threes. And what I said, you don't want good things to happen for Sacramento here at the end if you're Minnesota because they will take that in for the next game. Bibby has knocked in two threes tonight. 19 points for the Kings. Garnett. It's the Yakovich on him. Yakovich was a great defensive presence against Dallas. And Kevin Garnett with a miss. Rebound by Christie inside. He's got 10 rebounds. He's got a double-double. Stiakovic for three. And a foul. And a foul. incredible Kevin I mean this game has switched so quickly that's why you can't turn the ball over these three start going in Sprewell saying my goodness gracious we're all right but I mean Bibby's hit two threes Stoyakovic has hit a couple and remember I said you didn't have to foul now all of a sudden there's a seven second differential so I mean you're in great shape right now you get this free throw you're down one you stop them there's seven seconds you can come back and win the basketball game. That's why they didn't have to foul on the last possession. Stojakovic can make this a four-point play. He is two of three from the free throw line tonight. On off Garnett. No, off the Kings. Off the Kings, they say, unless they change it. All right, now think about this. Christy missed a free throw. Stojakovic missed a free throw. The game is tied. Right. Minnesota led by 14, 98 to 84, with 4.15 left. Isn't it ironic, with about the same amount of time remaining tonight as there was in Game 2, we've seen a complete reversal with the team behind accelerating ahead, and a foul was just called, and it goes on Christie for the fourth time with 26.8 to play. See, this is where you really miss Cassell. He's a great free throw shooter, and he's a guy who can handle the basketball under pressure. You got Derek Martin. Now, the one thing I always watch is watch a guy when he gets to the free throw line. Does he start pulling on his jersey and doing all these extraneous moves? It'll show you whether or not he's nervous. And just, you just watch his body language as he goes to the line. Derek Martin has been around a little bit, and normally he's a pretty good free throw shooter. But let's check to see if he can knock these in. In the regular season, Martin was 9 of 9. In the playoffs, he has gone 3 of 6 from the free throw line. First trip tonight. Huge. Absolutely huge. Now, the reason he's on this team is because he played here early in his career in Minnesota, but he played for Flip in the CBA, and Flip liked him, and he trusted him. So when they had their problems with Troy Hudson with injuries, they picked him up to play eight or ten minutes because Flip trusted him. He also played with Magic Johnson on the Magic Johnson All-Stars. Missing the back end right there. And a timeout taken by Sacramento. And now the Kings will have one timeout, a 20 left. The Timberwolves have a full timeout remaining. And Sacramento with the ball, just under 25 seconds to play in regulation. And trailing by 3, 102, 99. Can you believe these last two endings in this incredible Western Conference semifinal with the Timberwolves and the Kings? Wow. margin and they came back late in this game well turnover they've done such a great job you get in the air you turn it over you can't defend against the steal mike bibby knocks into three what happens turnover you can't get back you can't defend against the steal bibby knocks another one down that's how those leads go real quickly in the open court after the garnett miss a stoyakovic three now more importantly he misses the free throw christie missed one or two or we've got a tie game right now or actually it would have been a one-point game right. because uh uh minnesota uh, Martin didn't make the one free throw. Now, they don't need a three here, Kevin. They have a 20-second timeout. Get a quick field goal if you can. And then make Minnesota make some free throws. Extend the game. Don't shoot a three unless it's just right there for you. 
Here comes Bibby off to Miller, picked up by Fred Hoiberg. Cassell is fouled out. It's Weber with the mismatch on Mason. Great job. They got the switch. They went inside. You got to love that. And quickly fouled by Brad Miller is Derek Martin, who will once again go to the free throw line with pressure free throws facing. It's a good job here. They switched it. Garnett jumped out on Stojakovic, so he had the mismatch on Hassel. They throw the ball right down the lane line. That's good recognition by Sacramento. Derek Martin at the line once again. How about this pressure? Guy who had his CBA season end. He was sitting at home when the Timberwolves called. And he is knocked down coolly in this game. Two of three from the strike. What do you think Magic Johnson saying in the in the uh, studio right now about his teammates? Probably saying this is money in the bank. Magic watched him at UCLA. And, and again, if he makes this with 17 seconds to go, you still don't need a three. I mean, you don't you don't need to launch up a bad three get a quick two foul and extend the game Kings have a timeout left And here comes Bibby It's against Martin and Stiakovic for the time This is unbelievable This is unbelievable remember now Cassell has fouled out of the game When this thing goes into overtime, he's not gonna be here I mean, look at the body language of Sacramento now, and look at Minnesota. This is an amazing thing. Boy, Mike Gibby did a wonderful job of screening off Hassel on that play. That's a play that they run a lot. The little dribble handoff and Stojakovic, who had been ice cold the entire game, has buried three threes. Bibby has hit threes. This is amazing. Sergio Stojakovic <laughs> was the number six three point shooter in the NBA this season. Number two overall score. All right, what's what Saunders telling his team in that huddle right now? Well, they got to get a good shot. The question is, they don't have their point guard out there. So they don't have Sam Cassell to enter their offense. So is Derek Martin going to run the play? Are they going to go to Garnett? And, you know, and then is he going to be able to, out of the double team, find the open man? So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Stojakovic, again, as he buries the three, the emotion. And look at the looks on Minnesota's faces. That's almost reminiscent after Christie had made the layup when they went up 10 in game two, Sacramento, before Minnesota came back. Minnesota down the stretch has missed their last five shots. They've also turned it over three times. That, that's why four and a half minutes in the NBA is eternity. You've seen so many crazy things happen. I thought Isaiah Thomas scored 16 points in about a minute and a half one night. That's Kevin Garnett against Brad Miller. Got to go. Garnett. Stiakovic is in a straight jacket and four the We got overtime. Buzzer sounds, light came on, and the Kings have fought back from a 15-point second-half deficit to tie the game. Minnesota led by 14 as late as 4-15. And they go on a 20 to 6 run, giving the game its 17th time. Now, I don't like this simply because it's too easy to double team Kevin Garnett from there. They're going to drive him and spin him, and when they do, they're going to run in behind him. And that takes us to overtime. These teams have played overtime games before. We'll tell you that story when we come back. teams and back in early December Kevin Garnett in the extra stanza was absolutely devastated. Well he hit two critical threes late to send the game into overtime. This is one where he stepped out and knocked the shot down and this was the other to send the game into overtime where they won. He also had 25 rebounds in that game but this is where 
Who is Minnesota going to draw in here? This is where Kevin Garnett has to be the MVP. Sam Cassell is not out there to run the team. Now Minnesota has got to be able to find out to recover from this little rush, at this little spurt that they can hit with Sacramento. How about the emotional highs and lows, Kevin, with these two teams? They played, as you can see that graphic there, about how many overtime games they played in a row, four straight, including the first two meetings this year, which the Kings won back in November by four. In Minnesota, as we just saw that great 33-25 and 25 performance of Kevin Garnett won in early December. So this is the third overtime game these two teams have played in the seven meetings, including the playoffs this year. Well, the problem you've got right now, if you're Minnesota, Bibby and Stojakovic are now shooting the ball well. They, they have made some big shots. They're hot. Remember, Sam Cassell is fouled out of the game. Kevin Barnett. Knocked away by Miller and picked up by Peja Stojakovic. And here comes Doug Christie. And Stojakovic has got the high hand. Can't remember what I said when they had the lead. You cannot let good things happen for the Kings. I, I didn't think they were going to be able to win the game, but all of a sudden now Stojakovic and Vivi are making every shot. Stojakovic has 22. Timberwolves are shooting 46%. Weber for three. Minnesota's getting cold. Rebound by Weber. And the Kings are shooting 46% as well. I tell you, both these coaches are going to be in straight jackets after this series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Not to mention the two of us. Yeah. Here comes Brad no Miller. Question. How excited. It's Chris Weber with 17. Martin knocked it away. Hoiberg gets it. They got a little two on two with Martin colliding with Bibby with his great defense. And Christie brings it back the other way. I think Bibby has five fouls. He was very bad. Look at this. He's making every shot. Missing a three, Sprewell the rebound, he clutches on to his eighth, Sprewell has 23. And Kevin Garnett with the Timberwolf high 24. Double team, maybe triple teamed inside with a Sacramento foul. And they're going to put that on Brad Miller, who picks up his fifth of the game. They're going to call that on the pass. Look at the three-point shooting. That's how you get yourself right back in at five of six for 35 points in that period. 14 of them off turnovers. That's what those turnovers will do. Minnesota has it for the field in over five minutes and 20 seconds as Garnett tried to grind his way in and he is fouled on the play. Number four is put on Chris Weber. Kevin, remember we were talking about the first two games. In the fourth quarter of the first two games, Sam Cassell had scored 22 of the 35 points that Minnesota scored. He had 8 of 15 from the floor. Garnett and Sprewell were combined 2 of 13. They're going to have to be the guys tonight. There is no Sam Cassell. They're going to have to draw on the MVP and Sprewell. Those are the two guys who are going to have to make plays for them. Minnesota from the free throw line tonight, 16 of 22. Kings are 23 of 29. Garnett coolly drains it, 5 of 6, 25 points. As Trenton Hassel will come in, they go off Martin will leave. Excuse me, Kevin, offensive, defensive substitution. Now Hassel in the game. So that'll put, again, Garnett back at the point guard position. This is the sixth time in Sacramento era playoff history they've had an overtime game Dallas was the last in the playoffs a season ago Christie Miller will drop pass for Mike Bibby the two-man game with Miller and Weber with the shot clock at five and Christie's got the final it's a two-point try and Miller is there with the offensive rebound losing it and a jump ball is what they call one hustle by Kevin Garnett who's right in the back of Brad Miller and Dick Pavetta jumping in with the call. That's why you go down the floor for loose balls. That's another reason why you're the MVP. Look at him throwing himself around down on the floor here. The ball is loose. Then reach for it. He puts himself right down on top of it. Dives right down to get the jump ball. And he should have the advantage here and get this tip. Sacramento Kings tonight are plus 10 overall in rebounding. 
And we know Weber can't jump, so this would be an easy jump for Garnett. Or rather, Miller can't uh, jump as high as Kevin can. So this, he stole the yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He got up there quick, and that means the Minnesota oh, went out. Yeah, and that's it. Ticks off Miller. Minnesota's last field goal, Doug, excuse me, came at the 345 mark of the fourth quarter. You know, the only thing bad about this right now, what's going on, it's a quarter to two back in the east. There's a lot of people sleeping who are missing some kind of game. Terrific ball game. Three ball against Christian. In overtime, Garnett against Weber. They now double him with Christie and Kevin bobbling the shot clock at four. Trenton has it. Hit nothing. He was hit as he was going up on the shot. Is that Bibby sixth? And he's gone. And a technical foul on Bibby as he throws his headband up into the crowd. Oh, Mike Bibby is hot. Here's somebody throwing down and stuff on top of us. Well, now Sam Cassell has fouled out of the game. And Mike Bibby has fouled out of the game. The two point guards, the point guards have influenced all the playoffs in the NBA this postseason. You see, hit him on the elbow. When a ball goes like that, he did not hit the ball. You could see. And Mike Bibby can't do that. He's got to keep his poise there. Hoiberg misses the free throw. Hoiberg had been two of two from the line. So Bibby is ticked off. We're still tied. Now at 106, we've got two and a half to play in the first overtime here in Sacramento. And we got no point guards left. We're going to bring you <laughs> onto the floor, Coach Harlan, to run the team. And I'll be looking for you, <laughs> slashing off the baseline. We got a timeout. Very hotly contested game three in this best of seven Western Conference semifinal tie to the game of peace. You know, Kevin, it's interesting. When you look at the numbers, Minnesota only has seven turnovers in this game. We see. Tonight, the game three, obviously. Wednesday, the game four. We'll be in Minnesota Friday night for game five. But you look, Minnesota only in seven turnovers. They had turnovers in that fourth quarter that cost them 14 points. Hassel at the line, looking at the Kings tonight, Doug Collins. They've only played seven players. And they just lost one in Mike Bibby to foul zone. I tell you, the mood swings this series and we've only in the game three have been incredible. Anthony Peeler comes in for Mike Bibby. Doug Christie with 24 points and 11 rebounds tonight. He's got the double double as does Kevin Garnett with 26 and 14. It's the occupants is caught fire in the second half and smashes inside. It's Peeler for three. Rebound, Kevin Garnett taken away by Miller, bumping into Johnson. Outside a wide open, three by Christie. Miller couldn't get his hands on Urban Johnson. Rumbling out of bounds off of Minnesota. Sacramento will inbound with two to play in overtime. Well, fatigue sitting in, setting in right now on Minnesota's front line. Kevin Garnett is worn out. Someone's going to have to help him come back and get some rebounds. If I'm Sacramento, I go to that offensive board. And that's what Weber and Miller are doing. Look at the great hustle. By all the players and by Brad Miller down on the floor. New shot clock. And Urban Johnson. Here comes Stiakovic. 22 points. Weber. He's got 17. Foul. And Hassel in there defending. Hassel picks it up with three on him. Boy, look at the minutes played tonight. Sprewell's played 47. Rex played 42. Off the bench, Hoiberg's played 33 for the Kings, 47 for Stiakovic, 45 for Weber, 40 for Christie. Peja Stiakovic for three. This guy couldn't make a shot. Now all of a sudden he can't miss a shot. He's got 25 points. That is a Kings high. And they've got a one-point lead. Hoiberg. Sprewell's got 23. Now Kevin Garnett has got to come get the basketball. He's the guy. The defense by Christie. Here comes KG and a foul on Chris Weber. He's got five. Wajah well, Stoyakovich once again working off the screen. Hassel comes in from behind him, gets a hand in, in his back, and he still knocks the shot in Mike Bibby. And these two guys with their three-point shooting have electrified this crowd and given Sacramento what looked to be a they were going to be knocked out here tonight. And trailing 2-1 and losing the home court advantage. And they have fought back to take the lead. 
But one thing that has really fallen for Minnesota, the number of free throw attempts. Here's Garnett. He was 6 of 7. Now 7 of 8. That's 28 free throw attempts for Minnesota. And now 29 for the Kings. Before it was a double digit free throw attempt deficit for the T-Wolves. This is Kevin Garnett. This is where, as the MVP, he's got to lead his team to a victory. Yeah, big free throws in game two as well. Minnesota in overtime from the free throw line has gone six of seven. Doug Christie. Miller. Stiankovic. Oh, oh. And a foul. Deja Stiankovic has been unstoppable since late in the fourth and certainly this overtime. Kevin, what about the pass? What's the pass from Brad Miller? Right over the top of the head of the defender. And look at the catch and finish. He comes back to the other side of the basket. The soft roll. What a tremendous play. Just the confidence that Brad Miller had in Stojakovic that he could even catch the ball, let alone make the basket. Asia Stojakovic has scored all seven Sacramento overtime points. Timeout. Asia Stojakovic, one of the great shooters in the NBA, 27 points, the majority of which are certainly the most clutch, of which Doug Collins have come late in the game and in overtime. Well, his shooting electrifies this team, and he's made some big ones tonight. I mean, it looked like they were dead in the water, Kevin. I mean, they, they had nothing going for them, and then all of a sudden, some turnovers. Mike Bibby hits some big threes. Stojakovic, he hits the three to tie it at 10.7 seconds. Had all, he has all seven points here in overtime. Has a chance here if he finishes off the three-point play to give his team a two-point lead. But look at the fourth quarter in overtime. 20 points. And the guy was, I mean, he was non-existent in the first three and a half quarters. He could not buy a shot. And isn't it ironic that Minnesota, who trailed by 10 with 4-11 to play in game two, came back to win it. Tonight led in Sacramento in the final four minutes of regulation. Came back and outscored him 22 way Just the reverse. That's a big miss. It keeps it on the odd number. That means with the two, they can take the lead. Sprewell with a big time hit. He's got 25. Stojakovic has missed two free throws tonight. He had made what, 65 in a row at one time here. That's a drought of almost eight minutes for the Timberwolves dating back to the fourth quarter. Stojakovic with a miss and out of bounds. And off of Minnesota with 45 seconds to play in overtime. What's going to happen next here, Kevin? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, this is amazing. It really is. We are harnessed in as tight as we can be. Here comes Weber. 6 of 16 against Irvin Johnson, who has not given up any ground. Oh, and Stiakovic turns it over. Number 18 on the part of the Kings, Minnesota, in contrast with just seven turnovers tonight. Minnesota's got the lead and the ball in a difference of about 12 seconds. Game clock to shot clock. Who will take the shot with three to go? Garnett. And a timeout taken with the Timberwolves leading by three. His presence of mind, when he caught that ball, Kevin, he looked at the shot clock at the other end of the floor. He looked at the shot clock at the other end of the floor and saw how much time he had and turned and made the shot. Now watch Kevin Garnett's eyes. Look at him. Did you see him look at the other end of the floor? Knocked it in. Now the question is, will Minnesota foul here? Will they take the foul? It's the, Kevin McHale saying, take the foul. Watch him. He's going to look at Flip. He said, take the foul. Don't let him shoot the three. Garnett's got a game-high 37-0 and and He just put the Wolves on top by three. Ten point eight remaining. And the Kings are down by three. No fouls to give either way. Killer. Take it now. Take it now. And a foul on Hansel. That's right. 6.1 left. That's five on Hansel. And Stojakovic will be at the line. And he is two of five. Missed three free throws tonight. Yep. That is, and, and he's a guy that came into this game hitting 64 consecutive free throws dating back to mid-March.
Now what Flip Saunders is going to tell his team right here, make or miss on the free throw, we want a timeout. So they are not going to take any chance on fighting this ball up the floor. Most important thing is you got to make sure you got enough big people in there to get the rebound. You look at Hassel underneath the basket here. If Stoyakovich misses the second one, he's going to make sure he blocks out. He's got Peeler for the Kings at his side. Timberwolves have a timeout, and the Kings have two. They got a four, and they got a 20. It's inside the NBA is getting revved up in Atlanta. So obviously you're going to take the, you're going to make this free throw here, and then you got to foul immediately. Now it is a one-point game, a Minnesota timeout. That is their final timeout in overtime. The winner of this game goes up two games to one in this best of seven Western Conference semifinal. Remaining in overtime. All right, first of all, you have to have someone throw the ball in that you trust. He's not going to panic because you have no timeouts. Under the, the rules now, you can throw the ball into the backcourt. Remember, it used to be you had right. to throw it in. The, you can throw the ball. So you can spread it out and use all 94 feet. It makes it easier to get it in. And if you can, you want to get it in to your best free throw shooter, if at all possible. But the one thing you can't do is throw a lazy pass towards half court that can be picked off and the other team go down and score to beat you. Rodney Buford has come in for the first time in this series. As Spreewell will inbound and gets it to Garnett, who is tripped and down. He tripped with the ball. With 4.1 to play. This is amazing. I, I have never seen so many crazy things happen. And a timeout taken by Sacramento. Kevin Garnett catches the ball, and you see he slides. I couldn't tell whether there was any contact at all there, but he couldn't take a timeout because they were out of timeout. It would have been a technical foul. And Casale is saying that he was pushed. Rodney Buford had come in, and he was one of the primary defenders for the Sacramento Kings on Kevin Garnett. See, when you run out of timeouts, normally you could take a timeout and get it back, but it would have been a technical foul. But watch here. You're going to see, it looks like his feet just fell out yeah. from underneath him. He wasn't I mean, that, pushed. That he, was a good call. He lost his balance. As simple as that. But he did slip. So now, let's switch gears. 4.1, Sijakovic has scored all nine Sacramento points in overtime. What are they uh, digging up in that Sacramento huddle? Well, obviously, if you, if you can free up Stoyakovic for a shot, that's what you'd like to do. Normally, you'd go to a guy like Mike Bibby here. This is the time where he can get to the basket off the dribble. Really, nobody else on this Sacramento 10 can break you down off the dribble. So if you're Minnesota, you're probably going to switch on everything, but you have to be very careful of them throwing the ball inside the Weber after a switch for a quick post-up. So you know, this is, uh, is going to be very interesting. It'll be Christy Weber, Miller, Stojakovic out there for the Sacramento Kings. And Anthony Peeler will be the fifth King player. Remember, Sacramento had three very close games against Dallas and won them all. Can they pull another one out here tonight? Sal's fouled out. Sprewell, Hassel, Madsen, Kevin Garnett, Fred Hoiber. Christy will inbound. Time out. That's the last one. That's the last one for Sacramento. <laughs> so the Timberwolves got a, a little taste of what the Kings may try. And they'll go back and huddle on their side. <laughs> Inside the NBA is next with a lot to talk about tonight. Miami in our first game of our doubleheader on TNT tonight, beating Indiana. And we'll get post-game reaction from this game coming up next. The one thing, Kevin, if you're Minnesota, you do not foul a jump shooter. You, you cannot foul a jump shooter. You get a hand up, but you cannot foul a guy shooting a jump shot. Chance of go. Kings go from another capacity crowd. Christie again to inbound. 4.1. No timeouts either way. Stiakovic. And rejected by Hassel, picked up by Spreewell, and Minnesota takes a lead in the series. 
Trenton Hassel with a tremendous defensive play. Wow, this was this was some game. People throwing stuff onto the floor right now. Got to be very careful. Somebody doesn't get hit in the eye. That that was an amazing basketball game. The highs and lows, the ups and downs, everything that happened tonight, and this crowd is stunned. Let's take a look to see here the pump fake. And you know, he got the get the ball. It looked like Stojakovic kicked his leg out to try to draw the foul, but uh, Trenton Hassel. Came up with a big play. Watch now. What? Watch now. There may have been some elbow contact. The, que the question is, did, did Stojakovic take the ball into him? That's, you know, did, did he try to create the contact? That's a, that's a, that's a tough play to have to officiate.